So I bought the Demon Souls remake when it first came out because I thought, oh, pfft, I'll get a PlayStation 5 pretty soon. Yeah, that was two years ago, and I just got my PlayStation 5 not even a month ago, so that's how that went. And I know some of you watching are still on the hunt, and I wish you luck. Keep hunting. Maybe clicking that like button and subscribing will help. Who knows? I'm just saying. But yeah, I finally got a chance to play Demon Souls for the first time. And with my experience, it was interesting because, you know, I've played everything else, Dark Souls 1 through Elden Ring, multiple times. So to visit the predecessor of Unyielding Penetration, uh, the video game, I was wondering how it would hold up in comparison. And just to kind of give you the thesis statement, yeah, it's still pretty good by today's standards. Now, I went into this game knowing its mechanics are outdated and some of the flaws it has are prominent. And even though it's classified as a remake, most people would agree that it's pretty much just a remastered. There really wasn't that many changes. Even the AI stayed the same. So for those of you who have played the original, uh, what I'll talk about may sound familiar. With that out of the way, let's get into it. My name is Josh, also known as Gug, uh, and I hope you enjoy. Let me start by saying, as a PlayStation 5 exclusive, uh, the graphics are phenomenal. These dirty, stinky feet are so detailed. The areas are gorgeous. Simply trekking through the levels are a treat. Uh, not to mention that the loading times are faster than me getting angry while playing Fortnite. Demon Souls, if you don't know, is about collecting, well, Demon Souls. Killing the old king a lot and lull the old one back to sleep. What I'm going to do is guide you through my adventure in order, and then point out certain aspects or mechanics that really stood out to me while I was playing it. I died to the tutorial boss, as most people did, and then I was warped to the Nexus. I noticed the music straight away, and my nipples got hard because the music of this game is so good. The Nexus theme is, is kind of similar to Gregorian chants, which is like pretty much epic vocals. Like, you know the Halo theme? That falls into the category of Gregorian chant, so I was immediately captivated. I know some veterans out there miss the old soundtrack, so I actually had to listen to the OG music. And you know what? I get where you guys are coming from. The original soundtrack had a, like a nostalgic feel to it. It was simple, yet had its own personality. So I get it, uh, even though I prefer the remake. I explored a bit and found the blacksmith and stockpiler Thomas, who is such a fine gentleman. Now, if you don't know, Thomas here manages your items and keeps them at the Nexus because what, what Demon Souls has that I'm so glad uh, they didn't continue in Dark Souls is item weight. Your items in this game have their own individual weight to them, meaning fat rolls are more prominent without proper item management. There's no need to explain uh, this mechanic further, it's pretty simplistic. I hate it. It sucks, and I just wish it didn't exist. There's no need for it. Now, I got used to it about like a third through my playthrough, but the fact that one additional piece of grass can cause my character to roll like he's made of stone is ridiculous. Speaking of grass, Estus or Crimson Tear flasks, uh, they don't exist in this game. You're pretty much a hippie who consumes plants, which has its benefits and its restrictions. On one hand, you can hold about 20 plus pieces of grass to munch on like a starving cow, uh, but once that reservoir is depleted, you have to farm enemies for that grass or souls to go buy more. Honestly, I felt like a heroin addict throughout most of this game because I couldn't push forward without my grass. It kind of falls into the same pit Bloodborne did, where you don't replenish your heals at a bonfire or, or lamp, so you have to pause your progress in order to gather enough grass to continue uh, again. Regardless, I pressed on into the first area, the Gates of Boletaria. I have to say, right off the bat, I miss the level design of Dark Souls, Bloodborne, and Sekiro. Like, Elden Ring is pretty cool, but Legacy Dungeons are not even a fifth of what Dark Souls is, and Demon Souls for that matter, because it's pretty much kind of the same formula. I examined every single aspect of this area, said hi to some of the locals, admired the dragons that I couldn't get past, and fought the first boss, Phalanx. It was at this point that I noticed how simple the combat mechanics were for this game. And, and even then, Dark Souls and, you know, Bloodborne, even Elden Ring for that matter, they're not really that complex. R1 and R2 were my best friends, and everything else was an acquaintance, because that's just how Demon Souls is. Now, did I expect more? No. Uh, I knew going in that it was going to be pretty much the same game from 2009, so this didn't really upset me, but I just wanted to point it out. Another thing that I thought was interesting was, upon death, you enter Soul Form, which is kind of similar to Dark Souls 2, where you have, like, reduced HP. Except, unlike Dark Souls 2, it just kind of stays at a certain spot. It doesn't get lower as you die more. Uh, which, I mean, take it as you want, I don't really care too much about it. And you also take more damage depending on your character tendency, but I didn't really pay attention to that. With Phalanx overwhelmed by fire, I headed towards the Tower Knight, and I have to say, the Tower Knight is my favorite boss in the game. 
The bosses of Demon Souls aren't your normal bosses. They all have like a gimmick or a huge weakness that you can utilize. Some of them are kind of normal, like False King Alon or the Penetrator, but for the most part, they have something that you can, you know, take advantage of. They're not exactly the most challenging encounters, but there is a charm to be appreciated about these bosses, and for the most part, I enjoyed it. Like, it was, it was still a lot of fun. In comparison to the rest of the series, I definitely prefer, like, the normal fights, but the gimmicky nature of Demon's Souls has a very nice appeal to it. That being said, the Tower Knight's weakness are his heals, so you just strike them a few times and he goes down, and then you give him a couple smacks to the cranium and he's a goner. Again, I enjoyed this fight a lot because it was pretty simple, yet it was a lot of fun. Now, I don't really know the lore about this game. Honestly, I don't really know anything about it, uh, but don't worry, this baby will fill me in on what's going on. I don't know why it's a baby or how it can speak. This is the same series where this exists, so I'm not gonna ask too many questions. But as far as what I can interpret, I think the story is pretty cool. The mines were next, and at that point, I realized a huge flaw that the game had. As I was trying to upgrade my weapons, as I tried to gather more grass for the next boss, the Armored Spider, I noticed I was farming more than I was actually playing the game. Obviously, these games have a portion of grinding that you have to do, but I feel like you have to have a balance with it. And with Demon Souls, I would argue like 51% of the time or more, I was fighting fat dudes for grass and looking up where to find the next stone to upgrade my weapon, which was the spear. I really enjoyed that weapon. I feel like I just really wasn't playing the game a lot. I don't know. Like, compared to Dark Souls and then Bloodborne and then Sekiro, like, yeah, I did a lot of grinding in those games, but I was still making a lot of progress as I did that. With Demon's Souls, you have to put everything on pause and then just gather a bunch of grass and then continue. I don't know. There was a weird pacing to it. 10% of my playthrough was also fighting the huge bear bugs because I was stubborn and an idiot. I also found these glowing orbs, and in my experience, they're either a good thing or a bad thing. Still not sure. Flame Lurker was the next target, and I've heard the rumors, and they are true. He was, in fact, one of the hardest bosses in the game. Mainly because his explosions covered every possible rolling option I had, so I would take damage no matter what I do. That's fair and balanced. It only took me a few tries, but every time I had to gather more grass and make the two hour hike down back to his arena, so really it felt like 50. And at that point I also realized that's how spoiled I am when it comes to the series. Like I wished for extra bonfires, I wanted more checkpoints, Stakes of America were just a great addition. Anything that would allow me to not fight my way through the same area every single time I die to the boss. But no, you get two archstones, one at the beginning and one after the first boss, and that's it. Like, sure there are shortcuts, but when they're unlocked at the very end of a certain section, it just feels like a band-aid over a broken arm. Like, it doesn't really help. Now, I had a debate with myself, and my debate was, okay, listen, there's less checkpoints in the game. Does that mean that the world building is better? Does that mean that the world itself is more interconnected because every time you die, you have to make the whole trek back to the boss arena? My answer is no. Uh, because Elden Ring, I never really thought to myself, like, wow, I'm just kind of skipping the entire area, or wow, all these checkpoints, it just kind of sucks. No, they were very beneficial, and it did not hurt the world building, if you asked me. Again, Demon Souls was the first game, so they didn't really know how annoying this would be. Or maybe they did and just left it in here. But yeah, less checkpoints, I'm just not a big fan of it. Anyways, back to my journey, I actually couldn't defeat the Flame Lurker at first, so I decided to visit the Prison of Hope, which was one of my favorite areas in the entire game. I even got shanked, just like in real prison. Now, the inmates follow you around if you free them, raising their hands in praise, I think? I don't know, but they make these outrageous facial expressions. Honestly, I thought it was pretty funny, but it's those interactions with the area that makes the prison one of my favorites because it's more than just a creepy looking place. Like in general, the levels of Demon Souls have way more interaction than in Dark Souls or even Elden Ring for that matter. Not that they don't have any interactions, but I noticed Demon Souls more so. You have this fat guy toying with you later on in Bolataria. Like I said, you know, the prisoners, uh, the Reapers and the Shrine of Storms, they're the main enemy for each section. And there's more to it, like, it's unique, and I like these different interactions with the world. Back to the prison, uh, I discovered the Fool's Idol, but I'm still wondering where the actual boss fight is, because that was way too easy. I knew that the next part of the prison was going to be difficult, and I also knew that the Man Eaters exist, and I knew that they were in this area, so I went back to face the Flame Lurker once again, and after a few tries, we took him down. What I did was, I actually unlocked, like, I didn't lock onto the Flame Lurker, because I had more mobility that way. 
the AI is pretty much the same from 2009, so basically you just lure him in, run away, he does his explosion, and then you just poke him with a spear. Up next was none other than the infamous Dragon God, and for such a cool design, uh, the fight was pure dookie. It's pretty much an upscaled version of hide and seek, which I was never good at growing up, and that is reflected in my gameplay. Any sort of boss that forces you to take things slowly is just awful. Like, this isn't a relationship, this is a boss fight. And the only thing I really fought was his, like, chin spike, or whatever you want to call it. Like, considering this is a remake, I wish they did something different to, I don't know, REMAKE THE FIGHT? But here we are with the same encounter 13 years ago. I decided to explore the other archstones, Upper Latria being my next visit, and again, just like the prison, I love the structure of this area. It's shrouded in total darkness, making the enemies more intimidating with the lighting, uh, even if they die in three hits. Again, I was really impressed with the graphics, this area was really creepy, I enjoyed the atmosphere, everything about it. I don't know, if you ask me, creepy areas are just the best, man. The prison, the undead crypt, deep root depths all of Bloodborne. However, I got stuck with finding the other chain to drop the huge heart at the center. Really cool, by the way. Kind of reminds me of the brain of Mensis, but I ventured towards the heart of Boletaria, where fat dudes laughed and trapped me in different places. I picked up what was going on because I knew about every single boss, like I said, and I know that the penetrator, well, penetrates a fat official in his intro, so I, I knew what was going to happen next. However, I wasn't sure if I was ready to fight him, so I actually took a detour into the Shrine of Storms, where I found the Adjudicator. Now, don't laugh. But I absolutely adore this boss. I think he's really easy. As a matter of fact, it was 3 in the morning and my eyelids were as heavy as bricks and I beat him on the first try without much effort at all. But I don't know man, like I really like his design. Like fat dudes are just cool and the bird being the weak spot is, is kind of clever. Like I don't know how the two mix, I don't know what the lore is, uh, but I just, I love it. And then all that love and fuzziness went away when I met Patches. With the advanced facial animations, you can really see just how much of a cheeky anus inspector this guy really is, and I had the pleasure of stabbing him to death. I did fall back into the pit while fighting him, but I don't need to show you that, so we're gonna move on. The old hero was next, sporting one of the most unique mechanics, if you ask me, uh, for a boss in this game. The old hero relies on hearing alone, so you have to approach him very carefully in order to sneak in a couple of hits, run away, and then do it all over again. What I did was equip the Thief's Ring, which is basically easy mode. I didn't even have to run away, I just stood underneath him and just wailed away at his crotch. Now, if this game came out later, I'm sure the mechanic would have been polished enough to give it, like, a real challenge, but instead I felt bad for beating a crippled man, but I appreciate what they were trying to do. What came next, though, was my... I would say my second favorite fight in the game, the Storm King. The Storm King is an incredible spectacle fight where the Storm Ruler was first introduced, correct me if I'm wrong. Smiting the mini manta rays in order to bring out the big boy uh, was only the beginning. His sheer size combined with the rain, glorious music, and sound design, this fight had me in awe from start to finish. A neat little touch, when you're underneath him, the rain momentarily stops, which I thought was really cool. I wish the camera angle was a bit better. It seems this is where the camera issues originated, and 13 years later, the camera hasn't really gotten... It hasn't gotten any better. Regardless, I was very pleased with this fight. However, what came next was definitely uh, the most painful part of this entire experience, and I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. The Valley of Defilement was utter chaos. Imagine Blight Town, Fern Keep, the Gutter, and the Lake of Rot just combine into one amazing area, and that's how, 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 and that's how I would describe the valley. You're forced to be poisoned once you enter this area, which, by the way, poison lasts for a, for in a millennia. Dark Souls 2 poison is still worse, if you ask me, but Demon Souls is a close second. Not only that, but you have these swamp areas where you're hindered. You can't even, you can't even roll, but the enemies have no problem bending me over in that sludge. I wasn't a huge fan of this area, especially when your shortcut is only unlocked at the very end of the level. From my experience, I had to run through this area multiple times because I died at the Colossus or other sections for, like, stupid reasons, and I had to make the entire run back, only then discovering the shortcut, which didn't matter because I beat the Colossus then. Like, you know that feeling when you die and have to restart a level or a boss, or, like, even in real life, like, if something gets wiped or destroyed and you have to do that whole project over again, that feeling of emptiness, that feeling of, I just wasted an hour of my life, that is exactly how I would describe uh, the Valley of Defilement. 
I, I do think that the worst part of this area uh, was the outrageous prices this lady had for her grass. Dude, I don't care about your child. If I could, I would murder you and take all of your grass and, and that dress because it's actually pretty stylish. Even then, I still love the area's design, its theme, and the final boss for that arena made in Australia. I found out the hard way uh, to not mess with the plague babies, but other than that, it was pretty easy. And in the end, she killed herself, uh, and I was left with the man-eaters being the last loose thread. I switched weapons at this point, as you can tell, uh, to a fully upgraded mace, and it was pretty good actually. Demon Souls weapon variety wasn't like anything special, so for me to finish the game with a basic weapon felt really weird to me. Like, I'm used to finishing Elden Ring with a legendary armament that can call upon the powers of God. But in Demon Souls, I beat the man-eaters with a spiked ball on a stick. I understand where the difficulty of this fight comes from, by the way. The ganks, I get it. But honestly, I had no issues with it. Like, I died a couple of times, but honestly, a lot of the easiness comes from the run-up. I'll be honest, the run-up is not bad for the man-eaters, so honestly, I didn't really mind it. I would argue that the Flame Lurker, in general, was more dangerous. At the end of the day, an old monk was butchered, and now it was time to just simply end this journey. The penetrator got well penetrated. False King Alant was challenging yet simple. He did not perform the grab attack on me. I would have freaked out if he did. And I was finally able to face the final boss, a slug man. Now I understand why this happened based on the lore, I, I caught myself up after I finished the game, uh, but that won't prevent me from giving Old King Slugman uh, a great F for being one of the worst final bosses in my gaming experience. Like I knew he was the final boss, I knew it was going to happen, I knew he's going to be super easy, uh, but I was still really disappointed. Either way, he was defeated and with the Maiden of Dirty Feet ready to put the old one back to sleep, Boletaria was safe. You really think I let this world thrive and the Valley of Defilement still exists? Absolutely not. But yeah, that was my journey with Demon's Souls. And I have to say, even though it was very simple when compared to the other games I've played, I was mesmerized by the world and what the game had to offer. It felt really good to play through a game like this again uh, for the first time, essentially, because I didn't, I didn't really know what the level designs were. The only thing I knew about were the bosses, so I really enjoyed the interwoven complexity of the levels and stuff. It was... A lot of fun. And again, it holds up very well by today's standards. Now, because I've played all the other games of this franchise beforehand, this experience was 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 pretty okay in comparison, but I'm gonna give this game a solid 6.5 out of 10. Because it was still overall a positive experience, and there's a unique charm to this game that I really enjoyed. I really hope they go back to this format and leave the open world aspect behind, because what I enjoyed most in this game were the levels, and I definitely will play through this game again. If you yourself have played Demon's Souls or even the remake, let me know about your experience. I would love to hear about that. And yeah, like again, I really love this game. I think it was a lot of fun. And yeah, if you did enjoy this video, be sure to leave a like and to subscribe for more content like this. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care, everyone. And of course, stay safe.